War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. In the year 2077, after millennia of armed conflict, the destructive nature of man could sustain itself no longer. The world was plunged into an abyss of nuclear fire and radiation. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world, but war, war never changes. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as vaults. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in Vault 101. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. Because in Vault 101, no one ever enters, and no one ever leaves. got a son, Catherine. A beautiful, healthy baby boy. Oh, oh James. We did it. A son. A beautiful son. You've got a bright future ahead of you, son. I'm sure of it. Look at you. Look at you. Hi there. I'm your daddy, little guy. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... That's a good name, don't you think? Fits you perfectly. Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up.
you're going to look a lot like your dad. See that, Catherine? Oh, oh, very strapping. <laughs> it's a big world out there, son, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? J you're just James? A... Catherine? James? Catherine? She's in James. cardiac arrest. Start compression. James. Get the baby out of here. Move, move. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Come on. Hang on, Catherine. Hang on. It's you and me now. Okay? Just remember you one thing. We need a doctor, not a dead man. This one's on the house. Fail to meet my expectations. Now there's into a the beat to walk. James and his cheery charity. The decorations of the future is right. The boys in this place will feel Come on over here, just son. like home. Come on. Walk to daddy. There you go. My goodness. Just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo, I know you don't like it when Daddy leaves you alone, but I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while Daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, pal. I'll be back in a bit. Quite the little explorer, aren't you? You're all right for trying to pen you in. Come on over here. I want to show you something. See that? It was your mother's favorite passage. It's from the Bible. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. She always loved that. All right, come on. Let's go see if your little friend Amada wants to play. These experiments Don't be a damn fool. We experiment to prepare. We prepare to survive. Surprise! Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday. Can you believe it? He is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, pal. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only you Congratulations, your young man. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn ten, well, you're ready to take on your first official vault responsibilities. So here you are. As Overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You'll be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only ten once, so have fun. Oh man, you got a Pip-Boy. I wish I would. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> your dad was afraid you were onto us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. You're such a liar. Okay, if you're so smart, what did I get you for your birthday? Gross! I didn't think you even liked girls. And you know what I mean, before you say something rude about me. I guess maybe I should give this to someone else. Someone who likes Grognak the Barbarian better than me and Christine. The question is, how could you tell the difference? <laughs> What's ten? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Are you having a nice Attention, time? everyone! It's time to cut the cake! Hey, happy birthday, <laughs> Oh, no! How's it going, pal? Allow me to wish you a happy birthday. I would offer you a piece of cake, but, uh... Nice pit boy What is that? One of the 3,000 oh, A models? You always have what good ideas. What a piece of junk. 
Yeah, nice party. I got one. Daddy, the I Mackers. told you not to act Super cool, all right? I know Jeez, you were joking, Wally, who's but that I'm not again? sure anyone else me. did. No way! Nonsense. People always enjoy my little speeches. Some... How do you like that Pip-Boy, son? Fit all right and everything? <laughs> of course it is, just like everybody else's. They don't make them anymore now, do they? That one I've been saving just for you, though. The A-Series is a bit heavier than some of the fancier models. But it won't let you down. I bet you could drop a bomb on one, and it would still work. As a matter of fact, I know you could. Sure, most people don't give a thought to their Pip-Boy as long as it keeps working. Well, anyway, I got this for your birthday. It isn't much, and you probably already have one. But there you go. <laughs> Happy birthday. Besides, that friend of yours can use a reminder. Life is not all fun and games. Ugh, this is supposed to be a party, you know? Fun? You should try it sometime, nice Daddy. Party. Ball like rats. It. You guys like Are that? You having a nice... Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Such a nice, polite young man you are. Don't ever lose your gift to speaking your mind so directly. We could use more of that down here. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday boy. No sharing required today. I don't know. Maybe. Do you think Shut up and let me him? think a minute. I'm, I'm hungry. And that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. How about we share it? What are you, five? Give me that sweet roll, I'm gonna pound you. Oh yeah? We'll see about that. Sure of it, I'm gonna be so never suspected a thing. Thanks for coming, Stanley. Say I know uncle. you were busy with Butch, the water. Butch, what do you think you're fire. doing? Leave him alone. Everything's fine, I hope. You all right, son? Oh, sure, nothing to worry He didn't about. hurt me and Andy got her all fixed Jonas? again last night. Good as new. Hey, Doc. I wasn't we're all worried. Set down here. You can fix anything, Thanks. right? Thanks. I'll send him anyway, right down. I'm... Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. Glad you could make it. Um, what about the tunnel? Are you rats? enjoying the party? Happy birthday, dearie. My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. Of course you're not five. <laughs> you're a big ten-year-old man now, aren't you? With your very own pip boy. And do you know what I did? just for the occasion, wrote you a poem. I hope you like it. No, really, I wrote it just for you. I'd never just copy one of my old poems. Well, there was that one Founder's Day where I couldn't rhyme anything with overseer. But you deserve nothing less than a brand new poem. You can keep it in your pit boy and read it whenever you want. I help with the decorations. You and snakes and rats and wizards. Oh, really? They're lovely. I've got to think about it. Are you a nice time? Maintenance will ensure the device's operation for this and future generations. What are you doing down here, young man? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. Oh, I see. Now that you're ten, you're all business. Well then, mister, we'd better get to it. Happy birthday, by the way. Hang on one more minute. I think I hear someone coming. Are you ready for your surprise? The Overseer gave you your Pip-Boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, 
but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? We sure can't, unless we want the overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. Come on. Well, what do you think? You can come down here and shoot any time you want. Couldn't have done it without Jonas's help. You make sure to thank him. Careful, it's a rad roach. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? Just aim and shoot. You'll be fine. Good work. That's one less rad roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Captured the moment. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Hey, shoot the targets, okay? That's not a toy. Smile. Boys and girls have different parts. What is your problem right? anyway? So, I'm the overseer's daughter, so what? That like, I get any right. kind of special Tell treatment. Me. Revelation 21 6. I am Alpha and Omega. As far as I can tell, you're the a perfectly end. healthy 16-year-old boy. So yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. Go on now. You've got a GOAT to take. Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this year you take the GOAT. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Take care, son. I got out of here, and good luck. Good morning. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? Get out of my way, you stupid tunnel snakes! I can. Sh stupid tunnel snakes! Immature assholes, if you ask me! Why won't they leave me alone? It's not my fault my father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Please? Thanks. You've always been a good friend. Try talking to Butch. They'll all do whatever he says. She thinks she's better than I. Yeah? What do you want? None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. Come on, tunnel snakes. This little bitch isn't worth our time. Whatever you say, Butch. You're the boss. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine. Let's go. Thanks for getting rid of them. <sighs> Assholes. I don't know why they won't leave me alone. Just because my father is the overseer, I guess? Idiots. Sounds good. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. I'm sure you will, especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. Come on, people, table. find your seats. I've got other things to do. Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking, and keep your eyes to yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. Sure thing, Mr. Brutch. Unless anyone else has an insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. 
What's your response? Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic, a patient with a strange infection in his foot stumbles through the door. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? Question four. Congratulations. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Question five. Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? Question six. Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? Question seven. Oh no, you've been exposed to radiation and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? Question eight. A fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak the Barbarian comic book, issue number one. You want it. What's the best way to obtain it? Question nine. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking and... Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. Pencils down, people. That's it. The infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate or to pray as the situation warrants. Get out of my face. Here you are, Mr. Brach. I hope I did okay. Nothing for you to worry about, Miss Almodovar. Let's see. Very well done. Looks like it's the supervisory track for you. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Get out of my face. Looks like the diner's going to get a new fry cook. I'll just say this once. Hold the mustard, extra pickles. <laughs> Listen, I was just as obnoxious at your age. I didn't take the goat seriously. Look where I ended up. Just between you and me, the whole test is a joke. If you don't like the results, I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. Yo, teach! I'm done! Ah, Butch. Anything is possible, even an egg. Daddy, Mr. Stop Brock, right here to save you now. Is he going to get sucked away? Selfish and Wake up! Come on, wake up! You need to know these things. Come on! 
You've got to wake up! Don't be a smart mouth! This is serious! My father's men are looking for you. They've already killed Jonas. You've got to get out of here! It's your dad. He's left the vault. My father thinks Jonas helped him escape. So he had his men. My god, they killed him. They just beat him and beat him and wouldn't stop. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just sorry you had to find out like this. I know Jonas was your friend. But we've got to go now. My father's men will be here any minute. Not anymore, apparently. But are you honestly telling me you had no idea your dad was leaving? He really didn't tell you? Oh, okay. Sure. But it doesn't matter. I can help you escape. I have my own plan. Listen. There's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. Oh, one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you'd better take it just in case. Okay, I'll try to meet you at the exit. Watch out for security. Good luck! I'm not going to be around to hold your hand. I'll meet you at the vault door if I can. There he is. Hold it right there! You gotta help me! My mom's trapped in there with the rat roaches! No, I can't go back in there. It's... it's dark, and there's rat roaches. Oh my god! Thank you! I didn't know what to do! You are the best! You know? We did it! My mom's gonna be okay! You're the best friend I've ever had, man! Hey, I know it isn't much, but I want you to have my Tunnel Snake's jacket. Go ahead, take it. Any resident found outside his or her quarters will be dealt with severely. Son, I just want to talk to you. Oh, you're lucky it was me who found you. The others won't be so forgiving. I don't know what you're up to, and I, I don't want to know. Just, just clear out of here, and I'll pretend I never saw you. Don't think I don't know it. Why do you think I'm letting you go? I guess you're trying to follow your dad. Outside. Good gravy. If I didn't know what the Overseer would do if he caught you, I'd never tell you to try for it, but it's your only shot. You take care, and I hope you find your daddy. It's our only chance, don't you see? We're getting out of here, just like the doctor. I'm not gonna let anyone stop us. It's me! Tom! Be careful!
you. I don't I know you anything. turn up sooner or later. <laughs> reasonable, Mark. Blood! Oh. Ah! Look out! My friend, I was worried about him. What does he have to do with any of this anyway? Probably not. Hold on, Jonas. I need to record this first. I... I don't really know how to tell you this. I hope you'll understand, but I know you might be angry. I thought about it for a long time, but in the end, I decided it was best for you not to know. So many things could have gone wrong, and there's really no telling how the Overseer will react when he finds out. It's best if he can blame everything on me. Obviously, you already know that I'm gone. It was something I needed to do. You're an adult now. You're ready to be on your own. Maybe someday things will change and we can see each other again. I can't tell you why I left or where I'm going. I don't want you to follow me. God knows life in the vault isn't perfect, but at least you'll be safe. Just knowing that will be enough to keep me going. Don't mean to rush you, Doc, but I'd feel better if we got this over with. Okay, go ahead. Goodbye. I love you. I would make it. My, my, my father, he, I, my officer Mac, I, I didn't tell them anything, I swear. When the warning sirens came on, they all ran out. I, I guess that was you? I, I see you got the door open. That's good. You're right. Compared to Jonas, I'm just peachy. A few bruises, nothing more. What do I have to complain about? You seem to have come through in fine shape as well. Go on then. The door's open. Time for you to leave. And I'll stay here and clean up the mess you and your dad made. Don't worry, I'm sure I can patch things up with my father. That's what we do down here, isn't it? Smile and pretend everything is just fine. There he is! Oh! Ah! Gotcha now. Oh, Hold it right there. Stop in the name of the overseer. Stop in the name of there the overseer. He is right there. Oh! 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 Oh!
the mouth of your president, John Henry Eaton. Straight to your heart. Price agreed. on the level every hour. Welcome, sir or madam, to Crazy Wolfgang's traveling junk store, the depot of detritus, the shop of slop, and the caravan of crap. Now, what odds and ends can I, the craziest of all possible Wolfgangs, offer to you? Nothing but the highest quality leftovers, junk, and crap. Another satisfied customer. I ain't seen one of those jumpsuits in a long time. Name's Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, boy. Something tells me you're all right. So welcome to Megaton. Just holler if you need something. Friendly and well-mannered. I think we're gonna get along just fine. You treat my people nice, and you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, is there something I can help you with? Nope. Sorry. I got enough fires to put out in this place that I don't have time to keep tabs on every visitor. I'd ask around town. Sure thing, partner. What do you need to find? Sure is. Moriorities. The entrance is on the top level, opposite the main gate. Just be careful. Moriarty is not your friend, no matter what he may say. So don't fall for his lies. And for God's sake, don't trust the man. Sure thing. What's on your mind? Have a good one. What do you what do you need? Could be the guy I saw at Moriarty Saloon not too long ago. I'd ask there. Well, back to work. Ah, uh, hey there, on you piece of junk. Every day of you. My, my. Just when I had all but given up hope. My dear boy, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. I am Mr. Burke. And you, well, you are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool and makes you a rather valuable individual. 
finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this megaton, as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. No, no. I'm merely a recruiter. You get to have the real fun. The undetonated atomic bomb for which this town is named is still very much alive. All it needs is a little motivation. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge. Once rigged to the bomb, it will be detonated by you at a secure location. Easy money, my friend. Is that the best you can do? I'm afraid I'm not impressed. Excellent. I had a feeling about you. Here's the fusion pulse charge. It needs to be installed inside the bomb. When it's done, meet me at Ten Penny Tower. It's southwest of here, well out of harm's way. You can't miss it. Questions? Lack the aptitude, you mean? You're not rewiring the thing, just attaching the pulse charge to the detonator. If you get stumped, talk to Leo Stahl. He might have something to help you concentrate. He's got a bit of a reputation. Don't let me keep you. It's the same damn thing. I told you, Gob, it ain't the radio. The Enclave station comes in fine. It's Galaxy News. Their signal's been shit lately. Yeah, what the hell do you want? Colin Moriarty, at your service. Welcome to Moriarty's. My saloon, my home, my slice of heaven in this backwoods little burg. If you've got the caps, I've got your pleasure. Please sit down, make yourself comfortable. Your troubles are a thing of the past. My God, it's you. The little baby boy all grown up. Persistent little bastard, ain't you? Then and now, it would seem. It's been a long time, kid. Oh, your daddy passed through here all right. Here and gone. Got what he came for and then left. I I'm assuming you'll do the same, correct? Is that what your father told you? That you were born in that hole? That he was born there as well? Oh, the lies we tell to those we love. Your father brought you to the vault right after you were born. To keep you safe, you see. I remember it well. You stayed in my saloon, after all. That's right. Your father, his brotherhood a steel friend, and you, the suckling babe with nary a tit to suckle. Sorry about your mom, truly. Ah, but life goes on. Daddy lied. Life's full of little disappointments. And now you're all grown up and wondering where he's gone to. Ah, I see. You know, I heard about the brainwashing that goes on down there. From some other fella, escaped. Oh, five years back. All hail the overseer. We're born in the vault, we die in the vault, and all that other assorted lunacy. Kid, you've got better programming than our own deputy weld. You'd best wise up quick. Wouldn't want anyone taking advantage of you, hmm? You seem like a nice kid, so I'm going to be straight with you. Your dad was here, and now he's not. And yes, I know where he went. But what you're asking me for is information. And information is a commodity. And like any commodity, it must be sold at a reasonable market price. So what's reasonable? Let's say, oh, a hundred caps, and daddy's location's yours. Guilty as charged. Tell you what, kid. I'm going to help you out, for old time's sake. If you don't have the caps to pay for the information, then maybe you could do a little favor for me. 
Eager, eh? Good. I like that. It's nice to have a door in this shithole of a town for a change. This junky bitch named Silver borrowed quite a few caps from me. Claimed she could start funneling Jet and Psycho to me for a good price. Problem is, she scrammed with the loot and set herself up in Springvale so she can inject herself into a stupor. Get the caps she owes me and they're yours. Yours to pay me with, anyway. <laughs> Don't let me keep you. Yo, work. Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? That bastard. He's a... He's a liar! He just wants me dead. Those caps are all mine. I earned them! Look, I don't know who you are. I'm not just handing over my life's earnings to you. You'd do that for me? I never expected anyone to care enough. Here you go. Thanks, kid. You're all right. Sweet America, hello again. This is President Eden. I'd like to... Water. Oh, please, if you find some, please. to see you. Don't even think of breaking into that. Looking for a drink? You come to the right. And back he comes. So, are you just thirsty? Or are you ready to pay me fee? Dear dad's not gonna find himself. 
You took care of our little lost lamb, eh? I knew I could count on you. How about you just hand over a hundred caps and we'll call it even? It's called economics, kid. You got something I want and I got something you want. Nothing's free. I told you the favor would earn you some caps if you really took care of it. Now fork them over. How can you be so rude when I'm going to provide you such a useful public service? Your dad came through here all right. Didn't stay long, though. Said he had some important business to attend to and headed off to the city. Or something to do with Galaxy News Radio. Guess that'd be the place for you to start. Good hunting, and thanks for the caps. I await our next meeting with bated breath. Right place. Looking spring. He is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall be blind with his glory. Welcome to Megaton.
Control. Security protocol initializing. Station security grid offline. Metro Central not responding. Threat level Omega.
Look, I don't know who you are, but you don't belong here. The super mutants have overrun our brothers at the Galaxy News radio building, and we're headed there to back them up. You can tag along if you want, but keep your head down and try not to do anything stupid. You've been living under a rock? This is DC. The entire city is crawling with super mutants. Now, if you'll excuse me. That's a negative. We've got too many local conscripts as it is. Most are undertrained and too damn trigger happy for their own good. Our very own Initiate Redden is a sterling example. Watch yourself out there. What's the situation? All clear, Sentinel. Five mutants released from their torment. The rest are keeping their heads down. Brothers to arms! I want those targets down now! Pass my little trial run. Come on, lion. I need you. Know. That citadel. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We're clear out here. Stand we down. stays closed until we finish securing the perimeter. Hey, hey. Once we're inside, you're telling then me. we'll celebrate. Well, now you have a mess cleaned up. We'll sweep the perimeter. <laughs>
Looks like it's all clear, unlocking outer doors. The look on your face says it all. You're wondering who the heck this guy is and why you should care. Well, prepare to be enlightened. I am Three Dog, jockey of discs and teller of truths, lord and master over the finest radio station to grace the wastes, Galaxy News Radio. And you, well, I know who you are. Heard about you leaving that vault, traveling the unknown, just like dear old Dan, huh? Met him already. Yep, guilty as charged. <laughs> I don't usually have exposure to the public like this. It's nice to know someone's listening. Makes carrying on the good fight that much easier. Hey. Not everyone's cut out for bigger and better things. Sometimes the smallest roles in the good fight are the most important. But enough of that. If it's your dad you seek, then I will abide. The fact that the Brotherhood let you get up here tells me you're alright with them. That and your dad seem a decent enough guy. Besides, you're giving off a pretty sweet vibe right now. Maybe we can help each other out. But enough yakking. Tell me why we're talking. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. He was here with Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. Good, because this isn't going to be easy. Galaxy News Radio is my baby. I love it. I feed it. I keep it changed. But there's one problem. No one outside of DC can hear her cry. You see, some brainless super mutant thought it would be funny to shoot at the shiny round thing on the Washington Monument. Yep, that shiny thing was our broadcast relay. Now it's Swiss cheese. Without it, our broadcast range is quite limited. Of course, the factory that made the relay dishes is long gone, leveled, as in, we're never gonna scavenge that part again. It is risky. I would never lie to you. But there's something behind those eyes of yours that screams, I'm the one that can get shit done. Your dad had that same look in his eyes too. That's why three dogs helping you. One of the Brotherhood guys that passed through here mentioned seeing a dish in one of DC's old museums. It's the dish off the old Virgo 2 lunar lander in the Museum of Technology. I want you to get it and bring it to the Washington Monument to replace the bad one. That's it. <laughs> I sure know how to pick them. You're going to be the best thing that ever happened to Galaxy News in a long time. If you need any more info, I'll be here waiting for you. Got more.
Technology is all the text convergence of the three most important parts.
history has been recorded, man. Check out the latest on everyone's darling defender. Living able to one two punch out there in the wasteland. Boy, children, you are going to love this.
Hey, all right! The hero of the wasteland returns. Hey, you're the one who deserves all the thanks. You struck a major blow against tyranny. Now, GNR can be heard clear across the capital wasteland again. That'll give Eden and those muties something to think about. But before I get back to my calling, I bet you want to hear about your dad. When your dad passed through here, he and I talked for a good long time. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo, which didn't make sense to me. And mentioned something called Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then he left in a hurry. You've never heard of Rivet City? Wow. Just... Wow. Well, a whole bunch of people got together and turned a beached aircraft carrier into a town. Pretty cool, huh? Just follow the river south from here. There's no way you can miss it. Anytime you need a place to crash, duck in here. Be glad to provide.
What do you need? We're coming to you. A few odds in it. Give me a shout if you need anything else.
Have you? Really? Seriously? My God. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll never forget this. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. And who might your father be? If he lives on this boat, I know him. Dr. Lee, eh? Well, then I guess you'd have to ask Dr. Lee for more information. Go on up, then. She's probably in the science lab. But keep your nose clean, you hear me? We're the safest, most secure city in the Wasteland. Nothing can get in here without our say-so. Carry on, then. Everything looks okay here. the most advanced scientific center in the capital wasteland, I find your... Look, Dr. Zimmer, we've been over this. We don't know about your runaway robot, and we don't care. This lab is dedicated to solving real problems. Yes, yes, yes. But Dr. Lee... Dr. Lee is trying to save lives, and your constant interruptions are interfering with those efforts. Now please, stand aside. I'm sure the good doctor's work with water purification is fascinating. But if you only knew what was at stake, the technology in that android... What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vagaries and secrecy, a robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. Suit yourself. You there. What are you, some kind of lab assistant? No, you look a bit more weathered. Are you by any chance for hire? To the point. I like that. Well, as it turns out, I've misplaced some very sensitive property. You'll be searching for an android. Do you know what an android is? No, I imagine you don't. All you know of robots are those buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Well, that's not all a robot can be. Not in the Commonwealth. I'm talking about artificial persons that think and feel and do what we program them to. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. You're helping me retrieve this android, aren't you? I've tracked him this far. He's out there somewhere, in the capital wasteland. He must have done something drastic, like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. 
it will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. How quaint. Of course you'll be rewarded. I have at my disposal advanced technology from the Commonwealth. I'd be willing to share some of it with you. Just think, you'll be the envy of all your friends. Excellent! Locate my android and you won't be disappointed. Here, listen to this message he sent me. He's mocking me. I swear, I'll make him pay for that. Forget everything you know about robots. Those buckets are mere children's toys compared to the real thing. Androids have fake skin and blood and are programmed to simulate human behavior, like breathing. They can even eat and digest food realistically. Of course. Hello. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? Well, yes, of course I do. Don't you know who I am? I suppose James never told you. Typical. I'm Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your father many years ago. Your mother as well, in fact. You'll have to forgive me, this has all been very stressful. What with your father suddenly showing up here after being gone for so long? You have to understand that I... We put all of that behind us. Project Purity, our work, all of it. We've moved on, even if your father hasn't. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and headed off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. I suppose I can spare a few stim packs. It's not much, but it might make things easier for you. Good luck finding your father. Morning. Yes? I'm on duty. Make it quick. They call me Shrek. Ain't seen many of those around lately. They're tough to come by. What you look...
Give me a shout if you need anything else. Don't know you. A pleasure doing business with you.
Even in Vault 101, my work on Project Purity never really stopped. Soon after we arrived, my nightly routine included sneaking into the restricted areas, searching for, I don't know, whatever I could find. It was a vault facility after all. The place was built with some of the most advanced technology this country had ever developed. Those excursions never turned up anything particularly useful. So, one night after, half a bottle of scotch. I broke into the overseer's office. It was easy enough to hack his console, gain access to the restricted files. Most of it was garbage. Propaganda, spy reports, just plain rambling bullshit, really. But there was one thing, one name that stood out amongst all the others. Dr. Stanislaus Braun. I knew of Braun's work, of course. He was a celebrity in his day. Voltex sorcerer scientist, leaving his peers in awe with his technological wizardry. But it was in Vault 101 that night in the overseer's office. I first learned of Braun's involvement in Voltex's social preservation program and his work on something called GEC, the Garden of Eden creation kit. To be honest, the GEC sounded like pure fantasy, even for someone of Braun's capabilities. It was nothing short of a miracle. A terraforming module capable of producing life from complete lifelessness. But not only was this thing a reality, it was actually distributed to several vaults to be used after an atomic war. Vault 101 was, sadly, not on that list. I did some digging and discovered Braun's name on the reservation list for a Vault 112. And no slouch, but this man, have easily succeeded where I failed. Does his collected knowledge remain within the halls of Vault 112? Journals, hollow tapes, computer records, maybe even experiments. If I could gain access to just a fraction of Braun's genius, Project Purity would become a reality. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything of Braun's that might help me get this purifier up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. 
I have to. It's so close. But that's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece.
One of my inspirational quotes from the mouth of your president, John Henry Eaton, straight to your heart. Everybody likes a compliment. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
to Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. Please take a seat in the nearest... Available Tranquility Lounger. Thank you for your cooperation. Someone new to play with. What good luck I have lately. I was just starting to get bored. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. I'm Betty. I live here on Tranquility Lane. Want to play a game? I knew you would. It's a really simple game. All you have to do is make Timmy Newsbum cry. He's the only other kid that lives here besides you. He's a big crybaby. You'll see. Make him cry, and then come back here so we can talk some more. Hi there, I'm Timmy. Wanna play? You're a big dumb liar. Good day. What can I do for you, sport? <laughs> Such a kidder. You're on Tranquility Lane, of course. Where else would you be? My boy Timmy? Good kid. Straight-laced, good head on his shoulders. Never been in so much as a fist fight. 
We're a close-knit family. Don't know what any of us would do if something happened. Nope. Afraid not. Don't you worry about it, though. You'll find him. Sounds like you've been spending too much time with your nose in those darned comic books, sport. Another perfect Saturday afternoon. Make sure you enjoy it, sport. Have a... Hi, wanna play? What? No, she didn't. Did she? I don't like her. She's creepy. And she laughs at stuff that isn't funny. What? You're weird. It's okay, I guess. I don't really have nobody to play with, except for Betty. And she's kind of... well... she's mean. Your dad? Nope, I haven't. Did he get lost? Bye-bye! Hiya! Hello! What's going on? Oh, I was just looking at the new Robco catalog. Some impressive things they're doing these days. Hiya! Later. You sure showed him, didn't you? I suppose it wasn't the most cerebral way to deal with the situation, but it was definitely effective. Consider the game won. And with that, you win a prize. Your prize is one question which I will answer to the best of my ability. An interesting choice. Certainly not what I had anticipated. Simply put, you leave when I say so. This place is under my control and I dictate the terms. If I decide to let you go, you may go. An excellent question. Timmy was easy and therefore boring. I desire some real entertainment. The Rockwells are the picture of a happy marriage. Change that. Split them up without killing either of them. If you can do that, I'll have a good laugh and then we'll talk some more. Well, hi there. What a horrible thing to say. Is that your idea of a joke? Our marriage? Well, goodness, what kind of a question is that? Mabel didn't put you up to this, did she? What a silly thing to ask about. Good day to you. Now see here, that's not anything for you to be asking about. Our marriage is our business and it's private. Why can't people just understand that and just leave us alone? Heck of a place to live. Janet and I, well, we're quite happy here. Sure, sport, whatever you say. <laughs> Now that's not funny. Not one bit. Good day. Hello.
Good day. You? You don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here. It's not real. None of it. It needs to end. The suffering must end. We're not really here. We're not really talking. It's all made up. Make believe. We're sleeping, dreaming. The dream became a nightmare. It has to end. It just has to. But we're not in charge. He is. And he doesn't want us to wake up. He calls himself Betty now, but he's still the same. He can put on a new face all he likes, but underneath he's still evil. Braun. Bastard thinks because he helped create this place he's God here. But I know he still uses the fail-safe terminal. I know it. It's in the abandoned house. He doesn't want us going in there because he's afraid we might find it. It's the only terminal to the outside. The only way to shut the whole thing down. You've got to find it. Good day to you. I don't know what sort of thing you'd want to hear about. There was that one time Janet waved a rolling pin at Martha. Oh, but I suppose that's not really something you should concern yourself with. All in the past now. Ha oh, come on. Pay more attention to what you're doing. Hello. Do you realize what you've done? 
You've triggered the failsafe! Ruined everything! The subjects will die, and I'll be stuck here in this hell, alone! You ruined everything! Everything! You? No, I! I am the creator of this world! He is so lost. So... all alone. He's been right here the whole time. And you were too dense to figure it out. The dog, you see. Man's best friend. But now you've taken all my friends from me. Yes, I'm sure he's fine. No doubt when you leave the simulation, he'll be waiting for you. But there's no one waiting for me. Run along now. Son, you've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. It's so good to see you, but... but what are you doing here? Well, I'm glad you did. This certainly wasn't how I expected things to turn out. I wasn't ready for brawn, or I might have fared better. It certainly is. It's nice to feel that I'm on two legs again. And thanks to Dr. Braun, I know that Project Purity isn't lost after all. I was right about Braun. The technology he developed is unstable, even dangerous. But it can be adapted for Project Purity. I need to return to Rivet City and talk with Madison. If we can find a Gek, we can make Project Purity work. Yes. What I've learned, Madison is sure to see that we can finally succeed where we failed so many years ago. I'd like you to come with me. I'd like you to be there when we finally open the floodgates. That's my boy. Let's hurry. Now that I know what we need, I want to get back to work as soon as possible. It started as an idea, really. Remember the Bible passage your mother loves so much? Free, clean water for everyone. What a difference it could make in the lives of everyone here in the Wastes. Over time, that idea took the form of a purifier. Not like the one in the vault, though. This one was gigantic, capable of purifying millions of gallons of water at once. We used the old Jefferson Memorial for the location, right on DC's Tidal Basin. Someday soon, I hope you'll see it work. Of course, son. What's on your mind? I wanted you to be safe. I didn't want this for you. A life out here in this godforsaken war zone. I couldn't tell you what I was doing because I didn't want you following me. A plan which clearly was not as successful as I imagined it would be. What? No, no, of course not. I just... This is important work. Clean water can change the lives of so many thousands of people. It's worth the risk to help them. I can understand that you're angry. You have a right to be. Perhaps the choice I made wasn't the right one. At the time, I thought I was doing what was best for you. So am I, son. While this isn't what I had in mind, it's good to have you with me. Be careful, my son. Hello, sir.
Good to see you. I told you it would work, Madison, and now I can prove it. James, you're back. And with good news. I was right about Braun and the Gek. If we can find one, we can adapt it to work with the purifiers. I'd like to believe you, James. I really would. This is all just so... so sudden. Madison, I'm telling you, this is real. I talked to Braun himself. He confirmed it. Don't you see? This is what we've been waiting for. I... I don't know, James. So many years have passed. Is it really still worth trying? How could it not be worth improving the lives of everyone in the Wasteland? What could be a more worthy endeavor? You haven't lost any of your passion, have you, James? It's as important to me as ever, Madison. I know it's important to you, too. Let's finish it together. James, I... We don't have a Gek. I can get a small team together, but we'll need proof that it works before people believe us. I know. I was thinking about that. The lab at the facility had some old pre-war computers that we scavenged. One of them might be useful. From the last reports, there's no power at the facility. Even if one of those computers had a database, we couldn't access it. That's why we're going to head over there right now and get things up and running as best we can. You know, if it were anyone else asking me to do this, I'd have them run right out of Rivet City. And you know I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this would really work. It's time, Madison. Damn you, James. When this is all over, you owe me a drink. I'll get the team together. Thank you, Madison. It's good to be working with you again. Did you need something? Is everything all right? We need to get back to Project Purity. The computer there is our best chance to locate a Gek. That's my boy. It'll be good to work side by side with you, son. Did you need something? Did you hear about the fight in the mud? Good to see you. Yes? Decided to check out Another satisfied. Don't even think of breaking into that.
We can't accomplish anything until we can get inside, but none of us are particularly capable fighters. I hate to ask you to put yourself in harm's way, but you seem to have learned to handle yourself. I need you to go in and make sure it's safe for Dr. Lee and her crew. Be careful. time to go. The project was in trouble before, both internally and externally. Progress has come to a halt, both because our recalculations have gotten us nowhere and because the mutant attacks occur several times a day. I regret that it has come to this. I know that if I leave, our work may come to an end. Addison has never been on the best of terms with the Brotherhood. Aside from Scribe Rothschild, you'll tolerate none of them. If she's the one dealing with them, who knows what will happen. It breaks my heart to go, but I must put the needs of my child before my own. That batch of tests was inconclusive, but Madison and I are convinced it's a problem with the secondary filtration system. We're going to recalibrate the equipment and try again tomorrow, so that... James, please. I'm trying to work. Now's not the time. 
So that's the next step. We'll move on to... James! Stop! I need to finish these notes. <laughs> we'll move on to diagnosing the issues with the radiation dampeners. That should... Ow! James! Now? We really shouldn't. <laughs> So, here I am, back where it all began. Project Purity. God, we wanted to change the world. We really thought the waters of life could be a reality. And that's why this is a momentous occasion. Because even after 19 years, I still believe it. Project Purity can and will be operational. This is just the beginning. This is day two of my attempt to resurrect this project. I've got one of the portable fusion generators up and running, but it's just enough to power the emergency lighting and a couple of other systems. That will serve for now, but I need help powering up the mainframe. I hope to visit Madison and Rivet City. Yes? Are you all right? Is it safe in there? Excellent. Let's get inside and get to work. Yes? Yes? Did you need something? Evening. Hello, son. Hey there. I spoke with Dr. Lee Madison at Rivet City. It went about as well as I expected. That is to say, she thinks I'm completely mad. How can I blame her? She's got her own life, her own team, and is making real, tangible scientific progress. And here I come again, the very paragon of failure and false promises. But the reality is... Is everything all right? Madison and whatever scientific team hey. she may have assembled, I can't do this myself. Project Purity is bigger than me. It always was. And without Catherine... God, I can't let this die. Not again. Not like this. Is everything all right? Here we are, where it all began. You remember your mother's favorite passage? Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Don't you see? This is what it all means. The water, the purifier. This is the water of life. Your mother's dream. No point in wasting time. Let's get to work. There's much to be done. Is everything all right? Hello, son. Yes? Here we are, 
Revel. No point in wasting time. What? There's so much history here. So much time and energy spent on this place because it could help so many people. And now, after all these years, there's a chance to finish it. To see it through to the end and help all the people of the Capital Wasteland. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. With what I've learned from Dr. Braun, I know it can work. That's why it's so important to find a Gek as soon as possible. It's the key to Project Purity. So am I, son. While this isn't what I have in mind, it's... The project was abandoned shortly after you were born. Things have deteriorated here since then, and there's been some flooding. I need you to get to the flood control pumps and activate them so we can clear out the water and reach the mainframe. The automatic doors sealed when the flooding occurred, so you'll have to use the access tunnels to reach the pumps. I know there's a lot going on right now. This is all very sudden. I just wanted to say, I wanted to say that I'm proud of you. You're a good person and it shows. Life out here is so different from the vault. You know it's something I never wanted you to face. I'm glad to see it hasn't changed who you are. There aren't many who can say that about themselves. Right. The flooding shorted out some of the fuse boxes downstairs, including one that controls some of the automatic doors. Here, take these fuses. The box is back down in the sub-basement near the eastern end of the level. Once the fuses are replaced, you'll be able to get to the mainframe. should be able to access the mainframe. No need to come back to the control room. Just head straight there.
There are a few minor repairs still to be made up here in the control room. Why don't you come back here and give me a hand? Actually, wait. There's one other thing I need you to do. Jana says there's a blockage in one of the intake pipes. It's on your way back. Head back up to the museum level and give me a call on the intercom when you get there. I'll see you when you get back. Hello. Hello. This facility is now under United States government control. The person in charge is to step forward immediately and turn over all materials related to this project. That's quite impossible. This is a private project. The Enclave has no authority here. I'm going to have to ask you to leave at once. Am I to assume, sir, that you are in charge? Yes, I'm responsible for this project. Then I repeat, sir, that you are hereby instructed to immediately hand over all materials related to the purifier. I'm sorry, but that's... Furthermore, you are to assist Enclave scientists in assuming control of the administration and operation of this facility at once. Colonel, is it Colonel? I'm sorry, but the facility is not operational. It never has been. I'm afraid you're wasting your time here. Sir, this is the last time I am going to repeat myself. Stand down at once and turn over control of this facility. Colonel, I assure you that this facility will not function. 
We have never been able to successfully replicate test results. I suggest you comply immediately, sir, in order to prevent any more incidents. Are we clear? Yes, Colonel. Do whatever you want. There's no need for more violence. Then you will immediately hand over all materials related to this project and aid us in making it operational at once. Very well. I need a few moments to bring the system on. I grow tired of waiting. It'll only be a few more moments. Run. No. Run! No. What is he doing now? James. He's gone. We have to get out of here. They'll be coming for us next. We've got to evacuate now! There's nothing anyone can do for him now. The radiation levels in there are lethal. He'd die the same way he did. We need to get out of here now. We used an old abandoned tunnel as an escape route once before, many years ago. Everyone should know how to find it. We need to get there right now. Let's go. What is going on up there? We need to escape while we can. Don't wander off, we're going to need you. This tunnel leads to the Citadel, the Brotherhood of Steel's Fortress. We should be safe there, if we can make it. I don't know what's ahead, that's the problem. No one has used these tunnels in years, but we can't stay put. The Enclave will find us eventually, we have to get moving. We need to keep everyone together, and we need to get through this tunnel as quickly as possible. We're not safe until we reach the other side. You should stay close, and we'll follow behind you. We'll be right behind you. Be careful. What did you do?
We can't go any further. We need to stop. Garza has a heart condition. He needs medicine or he may not make it. I'm not moving until he gets the medicine he needs. I don't have sufficient medical supplies with me or else this wouldn't be a problem. If you have any stim packs, I would ask that you hand them over. Yes, this looks to be enough. He'll need medical attention once we've reached the Citadel, but this will get him there. Thank you. Give me a moment and we can continue. Well, we both know the answer, don't we? None. America's children live in a terrifying, meaningless existence. There is no hope, no happiness. That changes right here, right now. From this moment onward, the children of this great nation are its highest priority. The Enclave will restore every American school, reinstate every youth program, and offer counseling and financial assistance to any family in need. We will match up the destitute, orphan children of the Capital Wasteland with qualified, eligible adults. We will rebuild the American as it was.
you honor us with your presence here. Name's Paladin Bale. What do you need, civilian? I can see you're trying to appeal to my good nature. Pity for you I don't have one. I'll give you this one for free. We use our big guns to kill big super mutants, so people like you can sleep at night. Of course. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I have people with me in need of shelter. You must allow us access at once. I'm sorry, ma'am. No unauthorized civilians allowed inside the city. You'll have to leave now. Lions! I know you're in there! I know you can hear me! You open this goddamn door right now! surprised to see you again. What can I do for you? Don't talk down to me, Lyons. I had nowhere else to turn. You must help us. Project Purity has been overrun. Yes, I'd heard reports of an incident there. What details can you give us? The Enclave. They've attacked Project Purity. James is dead. There may be more. I don't know. You have to do something. Then it's as we feared. Madison, I'm sorry this happened. I wish we could have done something. Then do something now. They've taken over the purifier. Lions, they cannot be permitted to have control over it. It's not right. No, no, no. Calm down. You know as well as I do that the purifier doesn't work. It's useless to them. Perhaps it's time to walk away. That's not true. James, he found what's been missing. We know how to get it running. Is that so? Does the Enclave know this? No, I don't think... I don't know. I, I just don't know what's happening anymore. All right, Madison, it'll be okay. Now, this is James's son, I presume? I can see the resemblance. Yes. He knows what we need. vault Tech computer, something to locate equipment. Please help him. Very well. We'll sort this all out. I... I need to rest, lie down or something. This is just too much. Rothschild should help you, but don't forget that he's Brotherhood. I've never trusted them. Be careful what you tell them. Elder on deck. Knight. I heard Elder Lyons Hail. Have the These guys take all the contracts the other mercs won't. In short, there's nothing they won't do. Honor us with your presence here. May I start by saying that I am sorry for your loss. I was acquainted with your father many years ago. The world has lost one of its few remaining visionaries. I have been a part of the Brotherhood for many years. Enough that I was here when Project Purity first began. I did not work directly with your father. He and his team valued their independence, and I respected that. Think nothing of it. Now, Dr. Lee has explained your predicament. You need to locate some vault tech equipment? Really? A pity. You won't find one here. It may be possible to locate one, however. Possibly. I'm afraid I won't be able to assist you directly. The news Dr. Lee has brought will require me to be elsewhere. I can, however, give you access to an old pre-war computer from vault Tech. It may have the information you need. You'll find the terminal in the archives in the A-Ring. You are welcome. If you require further assistance, I may be able to help.
The Brotherhood is at your service. Ah, you're back. You need something else now. Ah, well, that much I believe I can help with. Step over here for a moment. I'll show you where it is. This map shows the locations of all known vaults in the local area. Vault 87 has been highlighted for you. There. Entrance to Vault 87 will be particularly difficult for you, I'm afraid. The area is highly irradiated. Lethal levels are all around the entrance. Gaining direct access will be quite impossible. Quite simply, you don't. To attempt such a thing would be certain death for you. So quick to give up. Disappointing. There is, in fact, another potential way to reach the vault. Lamplight Caverns is close by and may provide an alternate means of access. Attempts were made, but our resources are stretched thin. The radiation proved fatal, and so our efforts were focused elsewhere. Perhaps you will have more success. The Brotherhood simply cannot spare the resources necessary to investigate the area. Perhaps you may be more successful. If you do find anything, Please return here so that we may decide how best to proceed. I wish we could do more, but the Brotherhood potentially faces a very pressing, very real threat in the Enclave. All of my efforts must now be devoted to assessing the threat they may pose to us. I'm sure you understand. With your presence here. You have my condolences. Your father was a good man. This is not normally something that we do. Trade with outsiders has proven to be problematic in the past. However, considering the circumstances, so be it. I'll send word to Durga that you have full access to trade. Hmm, considering the circumstances, I think it would be prudent if you received such training, yes. Speak to Gunny in the Bailey. He will train you in the proper use of power armor. Fear not, I will send word that I have given my approval. You'll find him in the Bailey, I will send word that I have given my approval.
I received word from Elder Lyons. He says that you have permission to trade with us. Good for you. Gotcha. We'll see you next time, leech. Initiate, you've got a lot of nerve to interrupt. Oh, my apologies, stranger. I thought you were one of these worthless initiates. I swear, these kids would be lost without me here to powder their asses. Heard you were coming. Yeah, I can train you, but don't ask me to like it. My initiates sweat blood, and you just get a free pass? Anyway, you ready for this? Now look, to wear power armor, first thing you need do is relax your muscles. Let the suit do the work, okay? Now you. What aid can I offer you, outsider? Brotherhood is at your service.
right there, mister. Don't take another step, or we'll blow your fucking head off. You're big, and I don't have any big friends. You better just go out the way you came in. You don't want to go there. That's where the monsters are. We got pretty good at keeping them out. Probably better than you could do. Yeah, I do. But it's through Little Lamplight, and you're not getting into Little Lamplight. Guess you better find some other way, Mungo. This is Little Lamplight. We live here, and we don't need no Mungos messing it up. So just take a hike. Why would I tell you anything? God, you're dumb. I'm McCready. I run Little Lamplight because they made me the mayor. And I don't like strangers or mungos. Hell no! No mungos allowed! Oh yeah? You must like having such a good looking butt. <laughs> You're pretty funny for a mungo. Why don't you come on in? Happy birthday, Sticky. Sorry I missed your party. Yeah, me too. Sorry. There's nothing happy about it. This is the worst day of my life. It's time to go. You know the rules. The rules are stupid. You're a mungo now. You gotta leave. Maybe I can stay just a little longer? Bye, Sticky. Yeah. Bye, Sticky. Don't hey. just stand there. Get What's out of here now? already. Wow! What luck! I'm Sticky. Forget these little kids. I'll take you to Big Town where the Mungos, I mean, where the grown ups live. I'm headed there now. Big Town? You've never heard of it? It's where all the grown ups go. Well, at least when they grow up and out of Little Lamplight. I can show you the way. There's no reason to waste your time with a bunch of snot nosed kids. Let's go now. I'm not allowed in Little Lamplight anymore. Only people under 18 get to live in Little Lamplight. So when you're done with those little kids, we can go to Big Town together. I'll wait outside for you. Cool junk and collecting, as always. All right then, see ya. Waiter. New in town, huh? Well, if McCready let you in, that's a good sign. I'm Knock Knock, and I take care of keeping the peace down here. Or at least the morale. So who are you? You going to cause any trouble? Always good to hear, but not even any fun trouble? Even a little? See, I collect a lot of stories, and sometimes trade them to keep the others amused. A bit of fun trouble is always good for morale. More owls better than less owls, see? We don't go there. It's bad back there. Ask the mayor if you really want to know. Hey! Look, I don't 
don't just let any son of a bitch in my town. I'm taking a risk making an exception for you. So you're welcome in my town. At least until you start screwing up. Once that bullshit starts, you're out on your own again. Good. Better stay that way, Mungo. You don't want to go there. That's where the monsters are. We got pretty good at keeping them out. Probably better than you could do. Yeah, I do. It's through Murder Pass. Not a real safe way to go, but it's the only door that works. It's the only way that works, yeah. The other door hasn't worked since before I was here. Computer's busted and not even Joseph can make it work. I'm the mayor, not a babysitter, Mungo. Beats me. Maybe he's back there by the door. Fuck if I know. You sure about that? It's scary in there. Even I don't like going in there, and I'm really brave. Okay, if you say so. Come on, let's get the gate open for you, Mungo.
actually be a pure human? No! Oh, must you use that vulgar term? Yes. I was born in the FEV chambers. A super mutant, I certainly am not. I prefer the term metahuman. Yeah. Suits me better, don't you think? Perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself. The name's Fox. Yes. Indeed, it is ironic. Forgive my astonishment, but I hadn't expected to meet someone with such a learned outlook of these things. It is a pleasant change. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. It was only a matter of time before someone like you showed up for the deck. I know what it is. I know where it is. And best of all, I know how you can get your hands on it. Because you can help me let me out of this place i can't take it anymore i can't even recall how long i've been here take me with you and i'll retrieve the gek for you the chamber in which the gek resides is absolutely flooded with radiation it's unlikely you'd survive very long myself on the other hand I have surprisingly inherited a useful trait from my fellow meta-humans. I am highly resistant to radiation. Let me out of here, and I will place the Gek safely in your hands. At the end of the hallway, to your right is a maintenance room. Inside, you'll find the fire control console for the medical area. Uh, trip the alarm on it and I'll be able to get out. Oh, a word of warning, though. Tripping the console activates a failsafe and will open all the recovery rooms in the medical area. So, what do you think? Can you do it? I'm glad to see you are a sensible person. Now, get me out of this place. I can't stand it anymore. It is my hope that we will speak again soon.
Finally! Freedom! True freedom! <laughs> I cannot thank you enough for this gift. You have no idea how long I've pictured this moment in my mind, and it feels far better than I'd imagined. Now, for my part of the bargain, follow me. Come again. Time to die! <laughs> Okay, you stay here. Beyond this door, the hallways and chambers are flooded with radiation. I'll get the case and bring it right back. Keep your eyes open. Many of my lesser-minded brethren are bound to stumble across us. As promised, yeah, here's the gek. I hope it's worth it. Uh, I'm afraid this is where you and I part company. I'll find my way out of this place. 
Don't worry. Maybe we'll meet again somewhere in the, the wasteland. is secured, sir. Good work, soldier. Make sure the Gek is secured aboard my Vertibird. Yes, sir. I'll have the text come down and remove it immediately, sir. You're certain he's unharmed? Yes, sir. He'll pass out shortly, but we can revive him. Excellent. Prepare him for transport immediately. Right away, sir. So, oh, you're awake. Let's keep this nice and simple. You're going to tell me the code for that purifier, and you're going to tell me now. I'll tell you what's going on here. You lost. The good guys won this one, and now we're just wrapping up loose ends. We've got the purifier, now we just need the code to start it. You're going to give me that code now, and save us all a lot of trouble. Maybe I'll even let you go. So how about it? I'll be honest. I'm running out of patience here, and I'm not looking to play games with you. You tell me that code, or it's going to cost you... Why do you insist on provoking me? Tell me the code now. Colonel, I have need of you. Mr. President, I have no time for other matters. I'll be with you shortly. Now, Colonel. Yes, sir. Ah, hello at last. I do apologize for Colonel Autumn's attitude. He's been under a great deal of stress lately. I've no doubt that you know who I am. I'm sure you've heard my radio broadcasts. I'd like to have a word with you face to face. I think there are a few things that you and I should discuss. Your 
Find your possessions in the locker near the door. I'll unlock the way for you. And I'll unlock your restraints as well. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Please don't carry. Hold it right there. You're supposed to be in that holding cell. You're not going anywhere. There's a full complement of guards in the next room. As soon as I get them, you're going back to your cell. In a body bag, if necessary. On whose authority? I have no records of that. You're supposed to be in a holding cell. What? No one sees the president except Colonel Autumn. Stand right there while I check this out. Uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, this is Lieutenant Williams. I have an unauthorized individual here who says he's supposed to speak with you. I'm surprised to hear from you, Lieutenant. I don't recall authorizing you to contact me directly. Yes, sir. I I'm sorry about that. I, I just... Uh, it just seemed out of the ordinary. I apologize. Apology noted, Lieutenant. Yes? I instructed our friend to come up to the control room. No questions, no interference. Am I understood? I understand, sir. Again, I apologize for the interruption. Allow our friend to pass and report to your superior for reassignment, Lieutenant, at once. Yes, sir. Attention to all Raven Rock personnel. This is your president. I've invited our guests from well, Vault 101 to my office. Please do not impede his
face to face at last. It's high time we met. I'm quite pleased you were able to make it. The trip was not what I had intended, but serves as an adequate test of your abilities. You're too kind. The pleasure is mine, I assure you. I've been anxious to make your acquaintance for some time. You and I have much to discuss, my young friend. You and I have a chance to make our country a better place for all of us. I'd like you to make sure that chance isn't wasted. Understand, I am placing a great deal of trust in you. Your simple presence here proves that. Just what I needed to hear. What I'm gonna ask of you may seem a bit disturbing. I assure you, there's a very good reason for it. I'd like to explain what I want you to do. Will you indulge me for a moment? The good people of this country cannot regain control while mutation runs rampant through our land. My soldiers cannot stem the tide, nor can the cult you've come into contact with this brotherhood of steel. Mutations like the super mutants and ghouls must be purged from our society, our world, before we can proceed anew. Where others have failed, I believe your father's work can succeed. I was hoping you'd see it my way. If the water purifier can be activated, it can be used to distribute toxins that will eliminate any mutated creatures upon ingestion. The longer it runs, the cleaner the world becomes. I need you to see that it starts running and that the necessary modification is made. In front of you will be a vial of modified FEV virus. It can be inserted into the control console for the purifier. Doing so, we'll inject it into the water supply, and the purifier will take care of the rest. You just need the code to activate the purifier. Simple, isn't it? I understand. It's an unusual request, one I wouldn't make if it weren't of the utmost importance. Please understand that I cannot allow you to leave until you've taken the vial. And why would I do that, when I'm clearly the best hope for the people of the Wasteland? you're right. But does that really mean all this progress should be wasted? Destroyed? Yes, I suppose it is. Very well. You shall have your wish. Once you've left, I'll put an end to the Enclave. I cannot stop Colonel Autumn, however. That much will be up to you. I suppose, then, that this is goodbye have to see yourself out. I have preparations to make.
I knew you had survived, and I had hoped to assist in your rescue, to repay my debt to you. Yes, and the most fascinating one at that. Whoa, this technology is amazing. Imagine the evil that can be eliminated with such tools. I saw your capture, and a little cleverness allowed me to follow your captors. Ugh, I only wish I could have arrived sooner to aid your escape. As I owe you my freedom, I felt it was only fair that I return the favor. After all, I know no one else in this world. My friend, I would be honored to follow a hero such as yourself. Shall we go? saying is, the longer we sit here, the more time they have to shore up their defenses. We should hit them sooner rather than later. We barely have the manpower to keep the Citadel fortified. We've been over this before, Sarah. So we just wait until they decide we're next on the list? If the Pride goes in now, we might have a chance. And if you fail, then what? The risk is not worth the reward. I agree. Without the Gek, the Purifier is useless to the Enclave anyway. They may give up before long. I don't like it. You don't have to like it, Sarah. You just have to follow orders. Yes, Father. So, you're back. We had feared both you and the Gek were lost. Were you successful? Excellent. With that, we hold the key to keeping the Enclave from controlling the Purifier. What do you mean? Explain yourself. Then we must go at once. If you have any other information, tell me now before we mobilize. Any help you can give might save lives. I see. And where is this virus now? Thank you. I'll see to it that it's disposed of properly once the scribes have had time to analyze it. Perhaps we have underestimated the Enclave. Sarah may be right. An attack may be necessary now. If the Enclave has the Gek, there's nothing stopping them from starting the Purifier. They'll figure out the code eventually. I'm afraid you're right. We need to act now while we can. Send the pride in. We can do it. We can win this. All right, Sarah. The pride goes in. But I want them to have some extra firepower. Rothschild, is it ready? What? No, I, I mean, Lee and I have solved the power problems, but we've only barely finished diagnostic tests. So? It's not ready for field tests, let alone live fire situations. The weapons haven't been calibrated, the navigation detection system is offline. Rothschild enough. Can you make it work? Honestly? I don't know. I think we can scrape by, and I suppose if we can't, it won't matter in the long run anyway. Then it's decided. Sarah, you take the pride and use the robot as support. Take our friend here and secure that purifier. Yes, sir. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my father and I have been talking. The Pride and I have decided that after all you've survived, you've done enough to be an honorary member of Lion's Pride. 
So congratulations. Membership comes with some privileges, including our power armor. You want the full suit or the recon armor? Sure thing. Hopefully, it'll give you a bit of an extra edge. Okay. So do you think you can hold it together for this? Now that's what I like to hear, soldier. You all packed? We're not coming back here anytime soon. Hurry it up! Every- Quartermaster here. What? Give me a shout if you need anything else. Quartermaster here. Gotcha. We'll see you next time, Leech. Welcome.
Are you ready now? We can't afford to keep standing around like this. Okay, don't be nervous. You'll have the whole pride backing you up, not to mention this giant tin can. Just stay safe until we reach the purifier. You're no good to us if you're dead. And don't let that thing step on you. Okay, we're going to go over it one more time. The pride is on me. The goal is Project Purity, but we can't get into the facility with those energy fields up. Rothschild and Lee say this robot should be able to take down the energy fields. So we're on fire support. We stay close to the thing, keep it clear, and get it to where it needs to go. Once the fields are down, we head straight for the facility. We'll use the robot to keep them occupied while we get inside and secure the control room. We need to move quickly before we lose the chance to surprise them. Get whatever supplies you don't already have, and we'll meet in the Bailey. When we're done with this, everyone can have a nice cold glass of water on me. Let's move. All right, Rothschild, fire it up. Pride, move out! <laughs>
You again. I can't say I'm surprised. You and your ilk seem hell-bent on destroying everything our government has worked to achieve. There's nothing to stop me from killing you this time. Let's end this. You don't have to. Just stand there. It'll be over quicker and might even be less painful for you. Oh, no! 
Well, that takes care of that. By now, the Pride should be mopping up whatever opposition is left outside. Let's get this room secured. Dr. Lee, Dr. it's Sarah Lee. Lyons. Something I'm in the control room. We're both here. What's going on? I've been monitoring the equipment remotely, and we have a serious problem. The facility has been damaged during the fighting. Some of it looks accidental, some of it may have been sabotage. There's pressure building up in the holding tanks. It needs to be released now, or else the whole facility could explode. To release the pressure, you're going to have to turn the purifier on. Do you understand me? It has to be turned on now. If I'm reading this right, I'm afraid there are lethal levels of radiation inside the chamber. I'm sorry. I wish there was some other way, but there's just no time. It has to be done now, or the damage will be catastrophic. Well, so much for celebrating. One of us is going to have to go in there and turn the damn thing on. And whoever does it isn't coming back out. Not exactly how I imagine going out, you know? So, what should we do? Draw straws? If that's how you want to do this, fine. But be quick about it. Mm. This is a dire predicament. What? Ah! Of course! My immunity to radiation makes me a far better candidate for surviving in there. I would say that your destiny lies within that chamber, but you have already altered mine. The least I can do is return the favor, cycle the airlock, and we'll put an end to this. And so it was that the Lone Wanderer ventured forth from Vault 101, intent on discovering the fate of a father who had once sacrificed the future of humanity for that of his only child. The Capital Wasteland proved a cruel, inhospitable place, but the Lone Wanderer refused to surrender to the vices that had claimed so many others. The values passed on from father to child. Selflessness, compassion, honor guided this noble soul through countless trials and triumphs. It was not until the end of this long road that the lone wanderer was faced with that greatest of virtues, sacrifice. But the child refused to follow the father's selfless example, instead allowing a true hero to venture into the irradiated control chamber of Project Purity. Thankfully, when selected by the sinister president to be his instrument of annihilation, the Wanderer refused. Humanity, with all its flaws, was deemed worthy of 
preservation. The waters of life flowed at last, free and pure for any and all. The capital wasteland, at long last, was saved. So ends the story of the Lone Wanderer, who stepped through the great door of Vault 101 and into the annals of legend. But the tale of humanity will never come to a close, for the struggle of survival is a war without end. And war, war never changes. Careful now, careful. Don't move too quickly. Everything's fine, you're safe. You're in the Citadel. I was starting to think you might never wake up, despite assurances to the contrary. I've been coming down here every day to see both you and my daughter. It's good that at least one of you has recovered. Yes, yes, she's fine. Or oh, she will be. I appreciate your concern for her, but really don't worry. You've been through enough. Please, relax. Everything is fine. You were brought back to the Citadel after some sort of energy spike in the purifier. You and Sarah were both knocked unconscious. Quite a bit has happened since then. Indeed it did. The tidal basin is full of fresh, clean water now. We've been working to see that it's distributed to as many people as possible across the wasteland. In fact, I'm hopeful that soon we won't be referring to the wasteland any longer. None of this would have been possible without the efforts of both you and your father. I doubt we shall ever be able to truly repay you. Yes, we most certainly did. Between your help in destroying their headquarters and their subsequent defeat at the Purifier, the Enclave was thrown into disarray. Liberty Prime has been assisting our forces in removing any remaining Enclave forces. Just about two weeks. Don't worry, we've been taking good care of you. Well, that's really up to you, isn't it? The Brotherhood has a clear plan of action. The remnants of the Enclave must be swept away. The Pride has been working to this end ever since we took the Purifier back. The only remaining question is whether we can count on you to help us. Indeed. We can use every able body available to us. To that end, I am going to circumvent our standard recruitment procedures and declare you a Knight of the Brotherhood of Steel. Before you do anything else, please speak with Scribe Rothschild. I'm sure he'll be pleased to see you again. He can brief you on the details of the last few weeks, as well as where our efforts are focused now. I understand that you've been through quite an ordeal, but the sooner you can talk to him, the sooner we can put an end to all this. Please be careful. I would hate to lose you again.
honor us with your presence here. You honor us with your presence. Well, it's good to see that you're on your feet again. I assume Lyons is immediately throwing you to the wolves? Has he told you what's been going on while you've been resting? Well, Owen does have quite a bit on his mind lately, as I'm sure you can imagine. This is the first time the actions of the Brotherhood have affected him in such a personal manner. Please, step over here. I'll bring you up to speed. I'll give you a brief history of what's happened over the last few weeks and what's going on now. As you well know, this all began with the Enclave's occupation of Project Purity here. Thanks to you, their main headquarters here was utterly destroyed. They then suffered a second defeat at the Purifier. Based on a combination of intelligence and field reports, other Enclave locations throughout the Wasteland were found. Cut off from their leadership, it was expected that their forces would be in complete disarray. This has not been the case. Based on data and tech gathered from these locations, we've determined that the Enclave forces are still maintaining remote communications. We isolated the transmissions and found their origin point, an old military installation in Rockland, to the southwest. Our advanced scouts have checked over the area, but no easy access to the facility was found. So we're making our own access point. Paladin Tristan is leading the team setting up forward base in an old car tunnel near the site. Once he's settled, Liberty Prime will be deployed. Prime's directive is to neutralize their defenses and create an entry point for the team. The team will move in, eliminate any opposition inside, and cut off their transmitter. Any relevant data should be brought back here. Now, did you have any other questions? If there's anything else you'd like to know, I'll tell you what I can. Otherwise, Paladin Tristan will be waiting. I'll alert him that you're on your way. Don't hurry back.
Hey, you're awake. All right. Paladin Tristan is just inside. He's waiting for you. Well, well, look who's back amongst the living. Some of us were starting to wonder if you and Sarah were going to pull through. Is that so? Well, it'll be good to have another soldier we can count on. Basic rule of thumb on these operations. Keep your head down and let the robot do most of the heavy lifting. He can take it better than you can. All right. You stay back with me and keep safe. Once we've reached the facility, we'll talk about who does what. Until then, we do this by the numbers. Same strategy has worked just fine for the last two weeks. Let's get moving. Things should be underway by now. It's been pretty standard for the last week or so. We get intel on positions, go in and burn them out. The tin can does most of the work, honestly. I can't complain, it keeps our casualties down. Drives pulled up. information about this place yesterday. Some communication We're thinking if it's active, we can find out who they're talking to and get the last of the locations nailed down. find out what the hell just happened. There's no time to talk. Get your ass inside that base and help the troops locate the source of their transmission. Now, soldier, now! I don't know, I don't know. Terminals, data, anything that can help us figure out what just happened and where it came from. Thank you. 
dead bastards to the ground for what they did to Liberty.
Galaxy News Radio is nearly secure. I thought as much. The Brotherhood is at your service. I just... I can't believe it! All those years of work, all of it! For what? One botched operation? I'm still waiting on the debriefing from Tristan, but... I'm not sure it even matters. With Prime gone... Perhaps not. But that doesn't change the fact that it sets us back years. Years! And it removes the one significant military advantage we had over the Enclave. Ah, yes. Well, I'll see if we can't figure out how to read it. Perhaps it can give us some insight as to just what happened out there. It would be good to salvage something from this mess. Thank you for bringing this to me. I believe Elder Lyons will want to speak with you as well. Perhaps you should find him. If you'll excuse me. I trust you've spoken with Rothschild. I hope he can make some headway with the data you've recovered. With our primary weapon destroyed, we risk losing our momentum and jeopardizing the entire campaign. I must admit, I now wonder whether moving ahead with this operation was an error in judgment. And yet, here we are. Discounting the fact that our best field commander is in a coma, and I personal feelings for my daughter, things have not gone well. If we fail now, we could lose everything. Very true. And to that end, I'd like you to speak with Paladin Tristan. He's requested you for a special assignment, one that could prove vital to our success. Steel be with you. Nice work back there. Let's hope the scribes can do something useful with the information you retrieved. Unfortunately, we don't have time to sit around and wait for the analysis. Based on what I've seen of you so far, there's an assignment I believe you're well suited for. With the setbacks the Brotherhood has suffered, we find ourselves in a difficult position. All our available resources need to be positioned for the inevitable counterattack from the Enclave. At the same time, we believe we may have developed a tool to help our chances of victory. But with everyone needed to help defend against the Enclave, we have no one to send on a recovery mission. So, I'm going to have you travel to the Olney Power Works to secure some tech for us. Hopefully you'll be able to find a Tesla coil, an experimental device from before the war. Our scribes needed to complete a little surprise they've been preparing for the Enclave. Get there, get the coil, and get back as safely and quickly as possible. Any questions? Check with Scribe Valancourt. She's been researching some of the Enclave technology we've recovered. From what I understand, she may have come up with something. I'll be waiting for that Tesla coil, if you can find one. Exactly. 
finally the answer I was hoping for. I'm still very, very busy. Is this important, or can it wait? Well, maybe. I mean, possibly. I think so, but I'm not certain. I don't know how much this will actually help. I mean, I'm not quite sure how effective it might be, since it hasn't really been field tested. But I think I've figured out a way to override the signals the Enclave is using to control their death claws. Here, take this. It's only a prototype, so please don't lose it. It's a semi-standard transmitter, only I altered the frequency modulation and jacked up the output. Based on some experiments I ran here in the lab, it should override the signals the Enclave uses to control death claws. Don't worry, it's constantly broadcasting, so you don't need to do anything. Just don't lose it. And so far, I have no evidence of adverse effects of EM interference in humans. Animals, maybe, but not humans. Anyway, it doesn't have a huge broadcast range, but it should be enough. All right, then. There have been reports of an enclave camp southeast of Old Olney, so I'd head there if you want to try it out. I hope the scrambler ends up being useful. I'd hate to have spent all this time on it and get no results, or bad results. That would be worse. Good luck, and please be careful. Do about it. You always do. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.
got to get away. They're burning everything. They're all, they're all dead. Burned Grey Ditch right to the ground. Those things, they came out of nowhere. You gotta run, run!
What the? How the hell'd you get in here, smooth skin? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure thing. 
Uh, just right through here. Only there's a few death claws down here that might have other ideas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? Well, then you're stupid. Where do you think they're all coming from, huh? Goddamn nest down here. Take it from me, kid. You stay down here, you're gonna die. But hey, it's your funeral, right? Me and kid, we're getting out of here. Figure the way you came's gotta be pretty clear if you're still alive.
Gear up, soldier!
You found a Tesla coil? Excellent. I'll see to it that this reaches the scribes immediately. You've done good work, soldier. Are you ready for your next assignment? We don't have time to spare. Based on the data you brought us from the relay station, we've identified where the Enclave is basing their operation. It seems they have a second base of operations at Adams Air Force Base outside of DC. The only safe way to get there is through the presidential metro used by the government before the war. You're going to be on your own again for now. The rest of the Brotherhood will be providing a distraction so you can slip in undetected. Once you breach the presidential metro and get to Adams Air Force Base, look for the resupply crate. Inside, you'll find your new orders, and hopefully we can put a working Tesla cannon into your hands. Something, friend?
some of this and tough it out. security breach. This system is on code red. Alert status. Prepare for security check. Attempting to identify local access user. Identification failed. This access point is restricted only to authorized personnel. Please identify yourself. Fluctuations in your vocal tones indicate your statements are fallacious. Further attempts at deception will result in immediate response by security forces. Repeating query, please identify yourself. Information on the internal layout of the Presidential Metro system is for authorized personnel only. Please provide proper identification or I will be forced to summon security units and lock out this access point. Repeating query, please identify yourself. That you are in direct violation. Gear up, soldier! Take cover until the lawbreaker.
soldier.
soldier.
the threat detection. Are advised to leave the area. Security sweep in progress. Lethal force may be used without warning. No hostiles detected. Continuing perimeter sweep.
time to kick some ass! Surprised to see me? Well, we both have the pride to thank for that. Without them, we'd both be dead. But enough about me. You've done one hell of an outstanding job out here, soldier. A hell of a job. Now it's time to do my job, and to get your ass onto this vertebrate before it goes up like a nuke. Quickly, just get on board before those missiles level this place. When I first met you some time ago, I was leery of your motivations, and even more concerned with your methods. At the battle for Project Purity, you proved yourself, and any doubt that I had about you dissipated on that day. Now with the Enclave in ruins, and with you to thank for it, I'm almost at a complete loss for words. I feel proud to call you one of our own. And I promise that what you've done here today will be recorded by our scribes as an historic moment. On behalf of the Brotherhood of Steel and on behalf of the free people of this wasteland, I thank you. When I first saw you long ago in that alley in Chevy Chase, I thought you were just some trashy wastelander. I'm glad I was wrong. My father thinks the world of you, and so do I. If things were different, maybe we could have had time to become friends. Anyway, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you stick around for a while. We need people like you to help us finish what we started here. Well, the prize got the downtown area pretty well covered. You may want to talk to Paladin Tristan or Scribe Rothschild. They may have something for you to do. Good luck. My father says we need to watch the borders for them to send reinforcements. But I think it'll be a long time before anything happens. We dealt them a hell of a blow, and it's going to take them a good amount of time to recover. It's always a pleasure to have you around.